Today, I set out to uncover the identity of Karl Ruprecht Cronin, a chilling Nazi scientist born in the dark world of Hellboy comics, created by the genius Mike Mignola. And how can one discuss Cronin without mentioning the stunning adaptation by Guillermo del Toro, where this character became a cult villain on screen? So, settle in. It's going to be intriguing. In the comics, Cronin was a rather unremarkable scientist, distinguished primarily by his mask and protective suit. This was due to a severe obsessive-compulsive disorder and a fear of germs. However, Del Toro chose to make the antagonist more sinister, significantly expanding his backstory. In the film, he became one of Hellboy's main foes, second only to Rasputin and the Seven Gods of Chaos. Cronin was born in Munich in 1997. As a child, he was a true musical prodigy with an angelic voice. His talent for opera opened doors to the finest stages in Europe. But alas, puberty and the natural development of his body destroyed his voice, putting an end to a career that was just beginning to take off. From a young age, Carl began to develop a distaste for the natural order of things. Obsessed with hatred for his own body, which he deemed ugly, Cronin started to whip himself with a birch rod, finding a twisted allure in the pain. Over the years, this self-loathing morphed into a painful quest for physical perfection, eventually leading to a genuine surgical addiction. During his operations, Cronin removed his own nails, lips, and even eyelids. As a result, he had to wear a special mask that filtered air and protected his exposed tissues from infections. Later, Cronin gained fame as a talented mechanic and engineer, a master of clockwork. Yet even here, his talent was inextricably linked to his obsession. He believed that the fusion of flesh and clockwork was the path to perfection and purity. In 1930, Cronin met Grigory Rasputin and soon became his devoted follower. Serving the Nazis and participating in the activities of the Auschwitz concentration camp led him to the Thule Society, a group of German aristocrats obsessed with the occult. By the 1940s, he had risen to lead this organization. This allowed Cronin to serve Rasputin directly while establishing himself as Hitler's top assassin, eliminating undesirables both within and outside the party. Rasputin had by then delved deeply into black magic. It is believed that the combination of his dark spells and Cronin's bodily modifications stripped him of the ability to feel pain. He could also go without food, water, oxygen, and sleep, effectively shutting down his body like a clock transforming from a human into a machine. As a result of numerous injuries and modifications, Cronin developed a mechanical left arm and a wind-up heart, which he typically wound before battle to prepare his body for the strain ahead. Following Rasputin's orders, Cronin utilized the resources of the Thule Society to launch Project Ragnarok, creating a portal for the Agdru Jihad, monstrous supernatural entities that serve as the primary antagonists in the Hellboy universe. He also accompanied Rasputin and his followers to a remote island where the portal was set to open, defending it against Allied forces. Cronin killed many soldiers, but ultimately lost an arm while trying to retrieve a grenade that had been thrown under the portal. He was then pierced in the chest, yet due to his transformation, he did not die. When the Allies attempted to recover his body, they found nothing. Seventy-four years later, Cronin returned to resurrect his master and kill Professor Broom, who had taken in Hellboy's demon. Rasputin intended to use Hellboy to summon the Seven Gods of Chaos, but his plans were doomed to fail. In the end, Hellboy impaled Cronin on spikes and crushed him with a giant gear. It's important to note that although we don't see Cronin after this, he did not die. He could no longer die. Throughout his sinister career, Cronin demonstrated incredible accuracy, taking out enemies with a single shot. However, he preferred blades that had been implanted in place of his arms. The assassin was so skilled with them that he could even deflect bullets. But his greatest weapons were his intellect and ingenuity, which allowed him to transform himself into an eternal clockwork mechanism. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share the link with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and hit the like button. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.